Uh, this bash script video is a user request uh, from a user uh, Tina B125. And Tina B asked if I can write a script that gets the user's name and phone number and then confirms that the name does not contain any numbers and that it's not left blank and that the phone number contains numbers. Then log those to a file if they are not already in the log file. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're, I did that, I wrote the script, and today we're going to go over it. So if we go to bashscripts.info, which is a great site and you should visit, <laughs> we'll go to scripts, and right now at the top, it's because it's the newest, it's at the top, but if not, it's called confirminfo.sh, uh, and you can click on that to download it. I already have it downloaded, so let's go to where I have it downloaded to. And um, we're going to now have a look at the file. We'll call it confirm. Well, confirm. We'll use v Vim to get into the file. The top here is just uh, um, informational stuff. The first actual line of the code uh, uses the touch command. So basically, uh, if the file datlog does not exist, it's going to create it at this point. Uh, then we're going to clear the screen, set a variable called namex to zero and then we're going to start a while loop and the while loop says while the variable name x equals zero which it does at this point it's going to loop through this little section right here and the first part of that echoes out onto the screen what is your name then it gets what the user inputs and sets it to a variable called name and then we check if variable name is blank or contains numbers then clear the screen and echo invalid name sleep for one second so it just stops for one second leaves that up on the screen says invalid name and then it will start the loop over again now if the if the username is not blank and it does not contain numbers then it's going to continue to this else here and it's going to echo onto the screen uh, your name is and echoes the name and then it will change the name x variable to equal one which will get us out of our loop We'll clear the screen, and then we do basically the same thing for the phone number. Uh, we set a variable phone x. As long as phone x equals zero, which it does, gets asked the, for the phone number, checks the phone number, or grabs the phone number, checks to make sure the phone number uh, contains numbers. If it does, it echoes your phone number is or your number is, and then changes the variable of phone x to get us out of the loop. But of course, if it does not contain numbers, it says it clears the screen, echoes uh, invalid number, and it keeps it up on the screen for one second. Once we get through that loop, we'll clear the screen again. And at this point, we're getting ready to add our information to a log file, which is called datlog. And we have to check for duplicates first. So I create a variable called dupe. You can call it whatever you want. I call it dupe for duplicate. And it's going to equal whatever the output of these two commands are. It's going to cat out the information from the dat log, and then it's going to find, so it's going to use grep to find any lines that contain our name and number that have been inputted by our user. Um, so now, if dupe equals blank, so if it didn't find the information we just put in, then we're going to add that information to that file by uh, echoing the username and phone number into the log file. Clear the screen and we will output information to the user saying thank you, and then it will display their name, for entering the following information and it will display their name and phone number and it will hold that up on the screen for three seconds before exiting the program. Now if it did find uh, that entry already in there, so if dupe does not come back blank, we're going to echo, sorry, that info has already been entered into the log file. Keep that up on the screen for three seconds before exiting the program. So now we can run that program. Uh, you're going to have to, I've mentioned this in the past, but obviously you have to give that script permission to run. So change mod plus x for executable and confirm info.sh. So now it's executable. Now we do dot forward slash confirm info.sh what is your name I'll say middle x 1000 but you'll see when I enter that it's going to tell me that's invalid 
Why is it invalid? Because it contained numbers, and your name can't contain numbers. So I'll just say metal, and I'll hit enter, and I'll say what is your phone number? I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, oops. And I'll hit enter, and it says thank you, metal, for entering the following information metal, and then that number. We'll run it again. Um, we'll say Tom Smith for the name. Took that in no problem. You can also, you know, it accepts other characters because our script only checks to see if the phone number contains numbers. That's the only requirement right now. So, same thing, Tom Smith, phone number. Thank you for entering. Uh, at this point, I can cat out the dat log. You'll see I already have entered stuff previously. And what I'm going to do is I'll enter the same information uh, from one of these. So I'll do Bob and phone number 1111. So we'll run the script again. And I'll go Bob and I'll go 1111. And it will say, sorry, that number or that info has already been entered into the log. Now you may be going but I see Bob in here twice. That's correct because this Bob has a capital B. And as the script's written right now, just to keep it simple, uh, I didn't check uh, for case sensitive. So if it's the case is different, our script is considering it a different name. Um, obviously, you can add to the script to change that, but I just wanted to do this simple. So visit bashscripts.info to get this script other scripts and more video tutorials like this. Have a great day.